Level zero. Ironically, level zero might be the most important stage on the entire drought scale, and the one we talk about the least. When conditions are normal, everything works the way it is supposed to. Rain falls when and where it should. Streams and rivers flow steadily. Groundwater stays replenished. Crops grow without drama. Trees stay green. Wildlife thrives. It is nature in balance. It is also incredibly easy to take for granted. Think about it. When was the last time you saw a news headline that said, rainfall exactly average this month, or soil moisture looking perfect? Probably never. Normal conditions Conditions are quiet, they are background noise, and because everything seems fine, people tend to stop paying attention. But in meteorology, normal is actually a delicate state. It reflects long-term averages, not just what the weather looks like today, but what it has done over decades. When we say a region is in normal conditions, we are saying its climate systems are functioning in harmony until they are not. The tricky part is that normal conditions do not come with a warning when they start to shift. You might go a few weeks without rain and not think twice. The grass might look a little dry, but you assume it will bounce back. And often it does, but sometimes it does not. Sometimes, the drop in moisture is just the beginning. Some of the worst droughts in recorded history started in years that began completely normal. One of the most vivid examples is California in 2011. After a record wet year, snowpack was high, lakes were full, and no one was worried. By the following summer, rainfall had dropped. By the year after that, the reservoirs were shrinking. In two years, the state entered one of its worst droughts on record. That is the problem with normal. It feels safe, but it is fragile. Level zero is not just where the story begins. It is also where the danger is hardest to see. Because when everything looks fine, most people do not notice what is missing until it is already gone. And that is when level one quietly begins. Level one. Welcome to level one, the stage where most people shrug and say, it's probably nothing. But in meteorology, this is the first red flag. Abnormally dry sounds harmless. It even feels kind of normal in a lot of places. A dry week here, a low stream there. Maybe your grass looks a little crispy. No one's panicking yet, but something has shifted. This level marks the transition from healthy weather patterns to potential trouble. Rainfall has dipped below average. The soil starts to dry out. Streams and ponds are noticeably lower. Crops may not be dying yet, but they start to show early stress. Leaves wilt. Roots reach deeper. Farmers pay attention. It's like the environment is holding its breath, waiting to see if the dryness is just a short-term hiccup or the beginning of something longer. The thing is, most people don't even notice level one. It's subtle. It hides in plain sight. You can still water your lawn, fill your pool, and wash your car without thinking twice. Maybe your neighbor grumbles about how dry it's been, but it feels temporary. Familiar, even. But here's where it gets dangerous, because this is often the calm before the storm. Or, in this case, the calm before the storm doesn't come. In 2010, parts of Texas slipped into this abnormally dry category after a few months of below-average rain. Nothing major. No immediate alarm bells. But by the next year, it had spiraled into one of the worst droughts in the state's history. Ranchers sold off cattle by the thousands. Lakes dried up. Towns ran out of water. All because the early signs were ignored. Level 1 is not a disaster yet, but it is the first domino. The check engine light of the climate. If rainfall does not return soon, things can unravel quickly. This level is the warning whisper, not the scream. But if you miss it, you may not hear the scream until it is already too late. And that brings us to level 2, where the drought starts getting real. Level 2. At level 2, the word drought is no longer just a whisper. It starts showing up in the news, in town meetings, and on the faces of farmers watching the sky for clouds that never arrive. Moderate drought means the stress is no longer underground. It is visible. It is measurable. Crops that once thrived with minimal effort now struggle to grow. You see leaves curled and yellowed, fields that used to wave with green start turning pale and brittle. Farmers brace for lower yields. Even if they planted everything right and on time, the rainfall just did not cooperate. Pastures dry out, and livestock begin to feel the strain too. Ranchers must buy extra feed to make up for the lack of grazing, which cuts into already tight budgets. Water holes shrink. Every decision becomes a balancing act between conservation and survival. In towns and cities, local governments take notice. Water restrictions begin, starting with the polite suggestions. Limit outdoor watering. Fix leaky sprinklers. Skip the car wash. These measures often feel more symbolic than serious, but they are the first official recognition that something is wrong. And if the heat keeps rising and the rain stays away, those friendly reminders can quickly become enforced rules. One of the most dramatic examples of a moderate drought that escalated quickly was the 2012 drought in the United States. It began with a dry spring. By the summer, nearly 80% of the country was affected. Crops failed. Food prices rose. Ranchers sold off livestock early because they could not afford to feed them. Billions of dollars were lost. And all of it started with what seemed like just a dry season. Moderate drought is deceptive. It looks manageable on the surface, and in many ways, it still is. But it sets the stage for what comes next. 
Reservoir levels continue to drop, groundwater takes longer to replenish. The landscape becomes more vulnerable with each passing week. This level is the tipping point, the last stage where intervention might still reverse the trend, but only if action is taken fast. If the skies stay quiet and the rain does not return, things move quickly from manageable to critical. And that leads us straight into level three, severe drought, where the consequences hit harder and the damage starts to spread. Level three. At level three, the situation is no longer stressful. It is destructive. Severe drought is when the impacts go from inconvenient to damaging. This is not just about dry lawns or thirsty crops anymore. This is where systems begin to buckle and communities start feeling the heat in every possible way. Crops are not just underperforming, they are failing. Fields that once produced reliable yields are now dry, cracked, and empty. Farmers who plan their entire year around planting and harvest are forced to make heartbreaking decisions. Do they try to save what is left or cut their losses and hope next season is better? Ranchers face equally tough choices. Pastures stop producing enough grass. Water sources for animals dry up or become unsafe to use. Feed prices rise fast and many families are forced to sell off large portions of their herds just to stay afloat. In some cases, animals are lost to heat stress or starvation. These are not just numbers on a chart. These are people's livelihoods disappearing in real time. Water supplies drop quickly. Reservoirs and lakes that looked low a month ago are now alarmingly empty. The shoreline creeps inward. Boat docks are stranded on dry land. Some towns switch from water conservation to water emergency. Pressure drops in the pipes. Wells run dry. Wildfires become a constant threat. Everything is dry enough to ignite. A lightning strike, a spark from equipment, even a carelessly tossed cigarette can trigger a blaze. Fires move faster, burn hotter, and are harder to control. In regions like California and Australia, drought-fueled fires have destroyed entire towns. Families are forced to evacuate with little warning. Smoke fills the sky for weeks. The emotional toll begins to grow. School sports fields turn brown and crack open. Local economies tied to agriculture, tourism, or recreation start to collapse. Air quality declines. Tempers rise. Drought fatigue sets in. People stop asking when it will rain and start asking if it ever will again. In 2021, parts of the western United States experienced some of the most severe drought conditions on record. Lake Mead dropped to its lowest level since it was first filled. Hydroelectric power output fell. Farmers in California's Central Valley had water allocations cut to zero. And still, the heat and dryness continued. Severe drought is a breaking point. It tests communities, economies, and ecosystems all at once. Recovery is still possible, but it becomes much harder and more expensive. Every day without rain stretches the damage further and deeper. If nothing changes, if the skies remain silent, the next level is not just about damage. It is about collapse. Because level four is where nature, infrastructure, and society all start to unravel. That is when drought becomes extreme. Level four. This is where the landscape stops asking for help and starts falling apart. Extreme drought does not feel like a phase anymore. It feels like collapse in slow motion. Rivers dry up completely. Reservoirs do not just dip they vanish. The air is thick with heat, smoke, and desperation. At this point, the drought is not only affecting ecosystems, it is redefining how people live, or if they can keep living there at all. You walk outside and see fields that look scorched, even though they have not burned. What used to be green is now gray or beige. Crops are no longer stressed, they are gone. Livestock herds shrink fast, either because farmers sell them off in panic, or because there is simply no water left to sustain them. Ranchers lose everything. Generational farms go up for sale, not because they want to sell, but because they have no choice. Wildfires become relentless. In places like California, Australia, and the Mediterranean, extreme drought feeds megafires that rage for weeks, sometimes months. These fires are bigger, faster, and more unpredictable than anything seen in past decades. They are not just burning forests, they are burning homes, infrastructure, and entire towns. The skies turn orange, air becomes toxic, people flee, and even in cities, life changes. Water is rationed aggressively, not the polite early restrictions. These are real limitations. Certain areas lose tap water altogether and rely on emergency deliveries. Power grids become unstable because hydroelectric dams no longer generate enough energy. Brownouts and blackouts become regular. Hospitals prepare for climate-driven emergencies. Schools shut down during extreme heat waves because cooling systems cannot keep up. Look at Cape Town in 2018. The city nearly became the first major metropolitan area to run out of water. Authorities introduced the concept of Day Zero, the day when taps would be turned off and water would only be handed out at military-controlled stations. Conservation efforts delayed it, but the warning was clear. If a modern city like Cape Town could come that close, any city could. Meanwhile, ecosystems unravel. Fish die en masse as rivers shrink into warm puddles. Birds abandon their migration paths. Insects vanish. Trees wither and die by the millions, unable to cope with prolonged stress. Even species that once seemed immune to climate extremes begin to disappear. This level changes everything. Extreme drought means
means you cannot rely on the systems you once trusted. Not for food, not for water, not even for air. But the scariest part is that this still is not the worst case. Because next comes level 5, exceptional drought, where collapse turns into permanent loss. Level 5. At this point, we are no longer talking about crisis, we are talking about collapse. Exceptional drought is the highest classification in systems like the United States Drought Monitor. It is rare, it is brutal, and when it strikes, it does not just damage the land, it breaks it. By this stage, the environment is no longer responding. Recovery is not just unlikely, it may be impossible without years of perfect conditions, and even then, the scars remain. Crops have failed completely. There is nothing to harvest, nothing to sell, and nothing to eat. Livestock that survived earlier levels are now dying in large numbers water sources have dried up. Feeding them is no longer a question of money. It is a question of whether the resources exist at all. Farmers, already deep in debt, are forced to abandon generations of work. Communities built on agriculture begin to disappear. Dust storms return, not just as a rare event, but as a seasonal reality. Topsoil blows away, exposing dead earth beneath. This is how the Dust Bowl started in the 1930s. Mismanaged land, years of drought, and strong winds turned parts of the Great Plains into a swirling nightmare of black skies and choking dust. That disaster displaced hundreds of thousands of people. Exceptional drought today has the same potential, only now it can happen in more places, with more people, and fewer ways to recover. Wildlife suffers just as much. Entire ecosystems begin to collapse. Forests die off in large patches. Species vanish. Rivers stop flowing completely. What remains is a dry, silent landscape that no longer supports life. The human toll becomes impossible to ignore. Water is rationed to the minimum. Fights break out at distribution points. Families are forced to relocate as their towns run dry. In some regions, governments declare declare states of emergency, in others they lose control entirely. This is the stage where drought becomes a humanitarian disaster. Not because it arrived suddenly, but because it stayed too long. And the longer it lasts, the more it changes what is possible for the future. In parts of the Horn of Africa, for example, exceptional drought conditions over recent years have caused famine, forced mass migration, and destabilized entire regions. People are not just losing crops, they are losing time, opportunity, and hope. Exceptional drought is not something you wait out, it is something you escape if you can. And the the final level is not a category on a chart. It is a shift into something even more terrifying. Because after this, the land does not bounce back. It transforms. Up next is level 6, desertification, where drought ends and a new climate begins. Level 6. This is the end of the drought scale. Not because things improve, but because at this level, drought is no longer the right word. It is no longer temporary. It is not something you wait out or recover from. This is where the land changes forever. Desertification is when once fertile regions lose the ability to support life. The vegetation is gone. The soil is dry and cracked. Rain, when it does fall, runs off the surface without sinking in. The land has lost its memory of what it was. This process does not happen overnight. It creeps forward slowly, year after year, until one day you realize the forest is gone. The Riverbed is silent. The horizon is dust. Entire ecosystems collapse. Trees do not grow back. Animals disappear. Microorganisms in the soil die off. What was once a living landscape becomes sterile. Even with perfect rainfall, nothing will grow. It is not about lack of water anymore. It is about the loss of life itself. The consequences go far beyond nature. People are forced to leave. Cities cannot survive without water. Farms shut down. Food supply chains break. In some regions, governments fall under the pressure of failing resources. Conflict rises as nations compete over what little remains. This is not science fiction, it is already happening. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the Sahel region is losing land every year as the desert expands south. In parts of China, aggressive reforestation efforts have become a national priority because deserts have begun to swallow farmland. The Aral Sea, once a vital body of water, is now mostly salt and sand. Even parts of the western United States are showing early signs. Rivers run dry earlier in the season. Snowpacks disappear too fast. Groundwater is being pumped faster than it can be replenished. Farmers drill deeper and deeper Deeper, but eventually there is nothing left to find. And as these patterns spread, they do not just displace people, they change the climate itself. Less vegetation means less moisture in the atmosphere, that leads to less rain. The heat rises, the cycle intensifies. It feeds on itself, and the longer it continues, the harder it is to reverse. This is no longer a regional crisis, it is a global transformation. The loss of water becomes the defining challenge of the century, not just for farmers or small towns, but for entire nations. At this level, there are no quick fixes, there is only adaptation or evacuation. The drought has ended not because the rain returned, but because the land has given up. And what comes next is not recovery, it is survival in a world that no longer works the way it used to.